Hey, good morning. You're in the right place trying to get into the Word. We're studying today Lamentations from Jeremiah that wrote these out after the people were taken into captivity, and we're in chapter 2, verses 17 to 19. And here's what the Bible says. The Lord has done what He purposed. He has fulfilled His Word, which He commanded in days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied, and He has caused an enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the horn of your adversaries. Your heart cried out to the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Give your eyes no rest. Arise, cry out in the night. At the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. So we have at verse 17, the Lord has done what he purposed. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? God always does what he says. When he says he's going to do something, it happens. It's just the way God works. Now, there are occasions where he's leading us to repent. And when we do repent and change gears, sometimes God will change gears. But in, in many things, God simply behaves sovereignly. He just simply does what he says he's going to do. So we can't, we shouldn't be expecting we're going to argue God into the corner and he's just going to repent and he's just going to change direction on us at random. No, he, he basically the plan is 99% of the time God does what he says he's going to do. Flat out. And now there's something here that we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for all 52 chapters of the book of Jeremiah we've been waiting for and now and we're in chapter 2 of Lamentations. And it, it seems, it seems as though there's a, a glimmer of repentance starting to happen here. Of course, this is Jeremiah who's been repentant all along, but he's speaking sort of for this, the kingdom of Judah. He's speaking for the people of God. And you hear this, this kind of spirit of repentance here, right? It's at verse 18. Their heart cried out to the Lord, wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Give your eyes no, no rest. This is prayers of repentance. And this is what Jeremiah is sort of envisioning or portraying here, representing the people as the the people of God, like, like women crying in the streets, crying out, not just crying at random, crying to the God of heaven. So this is very important. There is the beginnings of some repentance. And when there's repentance, hey, anything is possible. God is just looking for that. He's, he's hoping to make it happen. He's trying to make it happen. But it's, it's our free choice. God doesn't ever force somebody to be repentant, ever. It's never happened. It never will. Plead for repentance. Sometimes you know that God wants you to do something in your heart. You don't feel a desire for it. But rationally, you might know you need it. And so what you do, you pray to God and say, God, please, I don't feel this, this love for my neighbor. But please, put it in my heart, a love for my neighbor. I don't feel this affection for my spouse like I should. Give me more affection for my spouse, for my child, right? God will answer those kinds of prayers for us. He delights to answer those kinds of prayers for us. We want our thoughts and feelings to be changed. Who can do it? God, the God from heaven, can do it. Let your tears run down like a river day and night. Be repentant. Find the gift of repentance. God will give us a gift of repentance. It's not in us. He'll give us a gift of it, though. How badly do you want it? That's always the spiritual question. How badly do you want it? God is looking to answer those questions. And then finally, we come to this business about basically verse 19, intercession, right? Cry out in the night, pour out your heart, lift your hands toward him for the life of your young children. Pray for God to intercede and be your helper. He loves to answer a prayer like that. What are we waiting for? So the situation in the city, grim, and yet some repentance and priest, the people are a priesthood. They can pray directly to him. They were called to pray. We're called to pray. And let's, let's us pray. Dear Father in heaven, it's very clear from your word that you love for us to repent. It's also very clear from the word that it's not in us. In our flesh dwells no good thing. There is nothing in us that would lead us to repent. And so, Lord, we come to you again, all naked and empty and, and without any, anything to give you. We can't pay you off or bribe you. What we can do, Lord, is say, Jesus died for us. We want more repentance in our heart. Please give us that gift of repentance. Oh, Lord, hear this prayer, which we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God has a gift for you and me, deeper repentance today.